Money-saving expert Martin Lewis has released a direct message to the candidates to be the next Tory leader and our next Prime Minister. It's mainly focused on energy prices. Let's take a look. This is a warning video. The winter coming is going to be bleak. I believe unless action is taken, we are facing a potential national financial cataclysm. As individuals, you need to be aware of that. So you can take, if possible, and to be honest, it's not always possible, preventative action yourself. Yet more so, the Conservative Party leadership candidates, one of whom will soon become our Prime Minister, need to know how stark things will be on the day they take office. So far, the debate seems to have mostly ignored the fact we are sitting on a financial time bomb. On the 1st of October, and this is a strong prediction because it's based the 1st of October cap on wholesale prices from February to mid-August, so we're most of the way through that. But the, the, the awful, sickening news is it's now predicted to rise 65% again, taking the bill for somebody on typical use to £3,240 a year. And that may be a conservative estimate because it keeps going up. Now, we'll know the exact number by the end of August. And that means that on the 5th of September, when our new Prime Minister is scheduled to take office, the direct debits will already be increasing by 65%. Someone who pays £100 a month now will start to pay £165 a month. Somebody who pays £200 a month now will start to pay £330 a month. And it doesn't end there. The price cap on the 1st of January, not quite a stronger prediction, but it's likely to go up 4%, taking the bill to £3,360 pounds a year for someone on typical use. And then in April, and we are getting into crystal ball territory, but in April when it was thought we might start to see prices dropping, no. Now the prediction is they'll stay flat or only drop a few percent, meaning next April we'll still be paying on typical use over a thousand pounds a year more than we are now. This winter we're going to need warm spaces. Public buildings, local councils, universities and libraries will need to open their doors and invite people in to keep warm because they can't afford to put their own heating on. And to the Conservative Party candidates, you need to understand the level of feeling out there. When I've talked about this on social media, and I have a decent following, and people's eyes are opened, the biggest response is actually people suggesting civil unrest primarily in the form of mass non-payment. And I think that unrest is becoming a plausible outcome unless we see you get a handle on this. That's the second time we've, we've shown you a clip of Martin Lewis talking about the potential for mass unrest. He's, he's clearly tapped into some real, real opposition to the government and opposition to these, these price rises. I should say, as, as well as what Martin Lewis said there, I was listening to a, an interview of him today on the BBC. He was clarifying um, because they asked him obviously about you know, you will have seen Rishi Sunak keep saying he's delivering um, £1,200 to a third of households, the poorest households, to deal with his energy price increases. Martin Lewis is saying that only covers that first increase. It doesn't cover the next 60% increase. And obviously, you know, as we talk about on this show all the time, it, it, it definitely won't cover people who are getting 15%, 25% rent increases if they're living in the private rental sector. If it's all being eaten up by those energy rises, it's not going to help you pay for food, which is 10% extra if you're not getting a comparable pay rise. Dahlia, I want to ask you about the contents of that message and whether you think Eva Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak will listen. Uh, no, of course not, because uh, if they would listen, they wouldn't have been in the running to be leader of the Tory party. It is the job of the Conservative Party to not only cushion the rich from crisis, uh, which obviously they do by shifting the shock of crisis onto working class people, but it's actually the job of the Conservative Party to use those moments of crisis in order to further consolidate the interests of the rich, which we've already seen in the leadership campaigns of Trust and Sunak, which both commit to tax cuts before they commit to anything else, essentially. 
there is an argument to be made that also preventing riots is also in the interests of uh, the upper class. But I think uh, there is a sort of very solid uh, hegemony within the Tory party that that doesn't happen here. Uh, Whether or not they will be proved wrong is in the hands of the people of this country. And I think that Martin Lewis does really important work here by actually making it very clear to his very wide audience that these are political choices, that the economy is not this self-contained force of nature uh, that we all have to individually protect ourselves against, even though I think historically he has been more inclined towards that way of approaching uh, economic issues like austerity and the 2008 financial crisis. And that has been very useful um, for, for a lot of people. And I think it's been a really important shift in the, the public uh, discourse, because even when you look in other parts of Europe, which, you know, these are not socialist states, these are states that are completely and utterly committed to neoliberalism. Um, but even within these states, you are seeing some some semblance of support, whether it's f- through subsidized public transport in Germany, or whether it's in the form of uh, cutting tax on, on energy, uh, etc. Um And of course, because the issue here is not only energy, but also the knock-on effects of energy increases. So food is going up, food prices are going up, et cetera. But I really hope that this will be a politicizing moment uh, for Lewis and and many other people to realize that in order to get the conservatives, uh, who are unfortunately the government that we have right now, to concede into making those different political choices, they will have to be pushed into that. And that isn't going to come from just giving them the evidence or making a well-oiled argument. It's actually going to have to come from a demonstration of political power. That's going to look like the worker strikes that we are seeing, cross-class industrial action, which is set to take place throughout the summer. But also, I think the withdrawal of paying bills Um, is a really important part of that. This is something that we've actually seen uh, throughout the world. If you listen to the first episode of Planet B, which is the Navara Media Climate Justice podcast, we actually talked to um, someone in the Philippines who who told us about uh, in when the privatization of the energy companies took place, in, in particularly in rural parts of the Philippines, which hiked up energy prices and actually made energy supply more unreliable. Energy workers went on strike, but also in solidarity with that, um, and also in protest against those increasing bills, consumers stopped paying their bills. And there was actually some beautiful solidarity between energy workers who helped to uh, reconnect local consumers to, to renewable energy when they were when they were being cut off by their energy suppliers for not paying their bills, and that succeeded. It, it succeeded in, in getting some concessions um, from the partnership between government and the energy companies. So this is actually a strategy that has been tried and tested throughout the world. And I think um, is the exact kind of expression of political power that doesn't wait for change, but actually demands concessions from a government that is systemically wired, whose modus operandi is to not deliver those concessions, no matter the impact. Um, on everyday working class people. 